Howdy and welcome. Uh, first thing I want to say is happy birthday, Mom. She's up here somewhere. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about brains today. And I got a question for everybody. That question is, are you satisfied with yours? <laughs> All right? Most people say, well, of course. All right? But then I hear people say things like, well, you know, I am a little tired. And you know, work's been stressful, and I'm not as quick as I used to be, a little forgetful, and you know, sometimes I hear people describe themselves as sad. So what's the normal solution for this? Drugs, right? <laughs> drugs. So every time you take a drug, I want you to have the following thought. My liver has a full-time job before I put this in my mouth. My heart had a full-time job before I put this in my mouth, and my kidneys had a full-time job before I put this in my mouth. So this is the publicity stunt title, and this is kind of the deluxe talk because it has three titles, actually. There's one in the program, one here, and the real title is here. Biasing the competitive winner-take-all networks in the brain to optimize performance with non-invasive brain stimulation. <laughs> All right. So the reason for the publicity stunt title is I was told that if this was the title that appeared in the program, everybody would get up to go to the bathroom right before my talk. <laughs> All right? But we're going to break this down a little bit. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank the team that actually does the work. So uh, I get to come and do this sometimes. Uh, but the people that actually do the work here, and there's a team of crack experts from the Mind Research Network in Albuquerque, from Sandia National Labs in Albuquerque, from the 7-Eleventh here, and from, uh, I'm now at Wright State Research Institute, and we're carrying on this work with some very good people. All right, so I want you to take note of these square brackets. So every time you see these square brackets, we're returning to the title, because I was told I might have to break that down a little bit. <laughs> so uh, let's first talk about brains, all right? So, Brains are the origins of our behavior. Brains have specialized regions for specific behaviors. And those specialized regions form uh, networks that process information and produce responses. All right, so that's the basics about brains. But there's one more thing you have to know about brains. That one thing is that brains are competitive, winner-take-all systems. So everybody got that? Is that clear? So, Here's my favorite brain analogy for a competitive winner-take-all system. It's this prize wheel. <laughs> All right, so say you go to a restaurant, and you have to make a choice. So what's happening while you are at the restaurant viewing the menu is that all these possibilities are spinning around in your head, and one of those possibilities will come to the top and win. All right, so now, the networks of specialized structures in the brain process information to make one response. We're going to call that the winner. All right? So now let's return to our title, and we're going to talk about bias. So how hard is it to bias that prize wheel? All you have to do is make, this, make a suggestion. All right? So what does that look like on our prize wheel? So let's say you go to the restaurant, and somebody tells you that the scallops and the chicken are the best things there. Now when the prize wheel spins, it's much more likely that you're going to come up with either scallops or chicken as the winner in your winner-take-all brain system. All right, so uh, winners in brain networks can be biased by simple suggestions. All right, now let's talk about this picture. This is a real picture gathered by a real drone looking at real targets. And this happens to be uh, at Kirtland Air Force Base in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right? So we didn't build the network that allows us to take these kind of pictures because we are happy, friendly, uh, looking for all the happy, friendly people on the planet. All right? So this is a foe. That's a missile launcher. Here's another missile launcher. And this is the friendly, this is a Humvee. Did all you guys pick those out before we started? All right. No? Okay, well that's the kind of information that our real analysts get to look at. And they have to make decisions about this. And we have to be really careful about what question we're asking. 
Because if we ask the question, is that a bad guy? Here's what we do to the prize wheel, right? We turn everything into foe. And so now when that prize wheel spins, what's the most likely response? It's gonna be foe, right? So if we return to our title one more time, what I told you was we're gonna optimize performance. And what I wanna argue here is that optimized performance is high accuracy, not a preferred answer, all right? So how do we do that? Well, the goal is to reduce the portion of the prize wheel that's dedicated to uncertainty if you want to get the right answer. It's not the case that you want to get the preferred answer. So with it, then this, when this thing spins, you may come up with friend just as likely as you come up with foe. All right, so high accuracy comes with training. Now remember way back in the distant past there, we talked about a piece of brain, or we talked about problems with brains, and one of those problems was sometimes we feel like we're a little slow, a little slower on the uptake, right? So can we bias brain networks for rapid training? And I'm gonna tell you that yes we can, by using non-invasive brain stimulation in this winner-take-all competitive system. All right, so we need to understand two things first. We under, need to understand how the brain works, and we need to understand where brain stimulation has its effect inside your skull. All right, so this is a real movie of brain activity recorded while a person is looking at that grainy, bla bla grainy black and white image that I showed you that has all of the uh, friends and foes in it. And if you look up here at about 100 milliseconds, you'll see the visual cortex here start to turn on. And then you'll see that information travel down the temporal lobe here. And you'll start to see activity here. And then you'll start to see that uh, activity being communicated to frontal lobe. And it's this network working back and forth that is that wheel spinning trying to decide if what you're seeing in the image is friend or foe. All right, so we did a bunch of these in some people that were novices and some people that were experts at analyzing these images. And when you're a novice, the, this piece of the temporal lobe barely lights up. But when you're an expert, that piece of the temporal lobe lights up like crazy. So, we reasoned that if we jump-started that piece of brain with brain stimulation, we might be able to accelerate training in order to make people who are better able to analyze those grainy black and white pictures objectively. All right, so now that we know how the brain works in this narrow context, we can ask, where does the brain, where can we put something on the head to stimulate the brain? So, we have this virtualized software where we can move this electrode around any place on the head and then look to see what's happening inside the skull. So when we place the electrode at F10, F10 is on the right hand side of your head, uh, roughly at your temple. All right, that's represented here. And what you see is if the electrodes are placed here, you get a pattern of, act of enhanced activation here. Well, that's not very impressive because blue means no stimulation. No, it's not receiving any energy from the electricity. And red means that there's a high energy here. So if we look here, well, maybe that little spot right there, but boy, that's not very impressive until you take this virtual brain and you turn it up so that you're looking at the bottom side. And when you turn it up to look at the bottom side, here is exactly that piece of brain that changes as you acquire expertise. And now what we know is we know that the temporal lobe is act more active in experts. We know that we can bias temporal lobe activity with brain stimulation. And we actually did it. So we did this in college students and in military personnel while they were actually analyzing these grainy black and white images. And this is what we get. So in the blue bar is standard training. One hour of training to learn to find four targets. 
All right, and you get about 200% improvement in those targets. If you train with stimulation, you get about a 650% improvement in performance. All right, so what does that mean for you and I? Well, I think that's what this means, is that in the future, when you're tired, there will be therapies designed based on brain stimulation to enhance alertness, to get rid of stress, to uh, reduce feeling slow at uh, picking up information when you feel forgetful. There's a clinical trial in uh, running at the National Institutes of Health right now for uh, depression. And a myriad of brain disorders will be worked on and solved. That nut cracked right here at the Wright State Research Institute in Dayton, Ohio. So now you can all take this title home <laughs> and talk about it, right, with some, hopefully, some understanding. Thank you very much.